Good morning. It's the Rogue Black Girl, Iafo Ingina. So I wanted to um, just do a little post very quickly before I go to work. Um, I got here a little early, so I thought I would do this because I just was listening to um, this local radio show. I forget the name of the show, but it's 98.7 here in um, Los Angeles. And they posed what I thought was a really good question, so I'm going to pose it to you guys. The question was, um, what would you need or what would you um, have to do to feel like you have made it or you have arrived? Like what in your life would represent making it, right? And um, there were some really good answers. Um, They had callers call in and respond and one guy said, (laughs) one guy said, um, you know, being able to set up all my bills on auto pay and know that they're going to get paid every month. Like I, I have enough money and I'm comfortable enough to know that everything can be set up on auto pay and I can coast, right? Some people said crazy stuff, you know, like being able to own a private jet or um, sending the kids to college or, you know, so very, most of it revolved around um, my money, which is you know, which is reasonable. Um, but I, based on just some of the things, especially the posts that I made last night, um, I thought it was a really timely and poignant question because just like I was saying last night about, um, this conversation that I had about, um, how this brother could not understand how my response could be that I was fantastic when he asked me how I was doing despite not having the things that in his mind represented um or justified a response like how are you doing this morning I'm fantastic right and again it's this notion um it's this way that we see happiness is something that is um almost kind of like a destination, right? It's this place that we're trying to get to, happiness. It's this place that we're trying to get to, joy, right? So it is difficult for people to conceive of the ability to be truly, genuinely happy, not content, happy, Um, even as their lives might not presently be um ideal to others i think there's an aspect of judgment that's tied to that um whether it's self-judgment or whether it's judgment of others um but the other thing is is i believe that we've been conditioned in a way that um makes it so that happiness is always synonymous with um acquisition of stuff um the more stuff that we acquire the more money we acquire then obviously the happier we're going to be And so this show, like I said, was just really, uh, I never listened to the show. Um, And so it was just really uh, timely and poignant and almost like a universal kind of um, affirmation about what I was talking about last night, that it is not unreasonable for a person um, to, to experience a sense of peace and a sense of connectedness and a sense of happiness, even as they are working towards goals that might be more identifiable as, you know, some arrival destination, some place that we're supposed to get to that's going to represent, you know, this idea of making it or having arrived, right? So there are things that I want. I am a reasonable person. Um, I want a house that I build myself. I want a library in that house. I want skylights in every room, right? There are very, very tangible things that I would like to have that I'm going to have. But in the meantime, I can't be happy. Like I can't be happy until I acquire those things because I think that is the, that's the thing that we, and it's the reason that nothing is ever enough. This is the reason that no matter what we have, it's never enough. 
because we set these goals and we say, I will be happy when, I will be happy once I, I will be happy after I have acquired X, Y, and Z. And once we acquire it, which if we put our minds to it and we do the work and we, you know, go through the, you know, the, the motions to acquire those things, then, oh my God, we're not happy. So we have to set new goals, right? Well, okay, I've accomplished all these goals and I'm still not happy. So maybe it means I need some more stuff or I need to do more things. And the only reason that I am saying this is because I know. I, a couple of years ago, was still living in Florida. And really, even though there were things that I was still attempting to do, I felt like I was pretty good. You know, I had I had done a lot. I had just finished eight years of medical school. I was not yet licensed to practice medicine, but I was working as a healer. I was working in a spa as a massage therapist. I was doing a ton of out calls. I was making really lovely money. I was able for the first time in my adult life to buy a new car. I had a dope apartment. My apartment was so cute. Yeah, I loved be it was the first time in my adult life I had lived alone. Because I had a child young. I had my got pregnant at 19. I had my daughter at 20 years old. So I have always lived with someone else. It was the first time in my adult life I'd lived alone. It was the first time I'd ever bought a car. I had a great job. I was doing political work. So I was still very politically active. So I felt like great about doing world changing work. But I still was not happy. And couldn't figure out, no matter what I did, that I felt like was in line with my mission. Doing healing work, saving the world, doing black power stuff, you know, political activism, solidarity work. You know, I mean, I was doing all things right. And I could not shake. I was, I was doing so much. <laughs> I was doing so much and could not shake. This feeling, one, this feeling of guilt. I felt guilty because I had accomplished these things that to me represented this place of arrival and was not happy. And so then because I wasn't happy with it, because I wasn't fulfilled by it, um, I felt guilty because I felt ungrateful, right? And so I know what uh, what it is to set these goals in our minds and attempt to run to this place, right? These hurdles, these benchmarks that are supposed to represent happiness because we have not sat still enough to really work on our own hearts. I mean, work on our hearts in a way that we can genuinely be be happy, be filled up in the present, whatever that present is, whatever that present is, right? So to be able to shift your consciousness from this place of despair and longing and because the longing will never be rectified, man, I'm telling you, it'll never be rectified if you cannot make peace with your own spirit. If you can't make peace with your own heart, there is no amount of shit you can acquire that is going to fill the void. It's just not. And so for me, you know, leaving uh, Florida, you know, leaving my family behind, um, sleeping in the desert, <laughs> you know, driving across country, sleeping in my car, sleeping in tents and, and getting to a point where, you know, I had $3 in my checking account, you know, to still be like completely optimistic every single day. Like today was kind of crazy. It's, um, let's see, it's 825 here. I woke up, something happened. I was like, oh, crisis mode. And then I was like, oh, shit's going to work out. And an hour later, shit worked out. To really shift to a place where we can be peaceful in the moment, happy in the moment, grateful in the moment. And I'm telling you, happiness can only come with a spirit of gratitude. It's the only way. <laughs> it's the only way that it can happen. Because if you can be grateful in the moment, if you can be grateful for what you have at at the present, everything else 
feels like a gift, right? Everything else feels like a gift. If you can be grateful, even in tumultuous times, right? That, you know, that place of genuine gratitude, because I'm going to tell you, like, these concepts seem logical, they seem reasonable, so why do we fight so hard against it? I'm going to tell you why, because every time I'd ever heard a conversation about gratitude, or about happiness, or about peace, or about joy, it came from a place that was so disingenuous that it made it hard for me to believe anything like I you know I try not to judge people so I'm not judging people but as a political activist you know as a historian as a doctor I will say that even though it was a necessary thing that happened I believe in reincarnation I believe we choose our lives so I know that I chose this life for the kind of um, acculturation in the beginning that was going to be a benefit to me later on. And I'm talking about Christianity. I'm not trying to be too um, ambiguous. I'm talking about Christianity. I was a culturated Christian. I was, um, my parents met in a Christian cult. Um, and I mean a cult. And, um, you know, and so being a culturated, hardcore Christian you know, and just to, I mean, if we remember, man, our spirits bucked against that shit. <laughs> we, I just remember, how can we be talking about peace and joy and love and happiness and hellfire and brimstone in the same breath? Like, everything about it was a contradiction. Everything about it, my spirit was just rejecting, rejecting. And so then I would turn in on myself thinking that I was inherently bad because there were things that I was drawn to and I didn't understand as a kid because my whole worldview was wrapped up in that shit. And so even after I became a political activist in my twenties, it was so hard for me I rejected these concepts, man, gratitude, happiness. I was a hardcore, hardcore revolutionary. You know, it's about fuck the police. It's about, you know, down with the system and all of that. And so, so now everything was centered around this rage for how bad the system was, how bad the society was, how bad everything was. And so I just could not hear I could not hear a discussion. I didn't want to hear it. I wasn't trying to hear it. And I think that's the place so many of us who do this work end up in where we eventually become worn out and demoralized because we bring no peace to the movement. Not only that, there's so many people who act like sh who are charlatans and parasites inside the so-called movement, inside the so-called liberation work. You know, these snakes and these, as a matter of fact, that's an insult to snakes. These parasites, these charlatans who lay up in the work looking to, you know, looking to exploit other human beings, looking to pimp the politics. And so to be in this place now where I finally understand um, what happiness feels like real happiness feels like not happiness that is tied to another human being that's fine but i'm saying some of us are only happy when we're in a relationship it's just problematic some of us are only happy when we have a lot of stuff which is problematic and again the real the real gem was in the moments that might be tumultuous can you still be grateful can you still be happy can you still be thankful in a way that resonates outward and is obvious to others? And um, that's the place where I am. And it took me losing a lot. It took me, you know, checking out of my life the way that it was to understand. It took me a lot of crazy relationships with other human beings it took me attempting to superimpose uh, love, um, 
on to others because I was always looking outside of myself for the acquisition of happiness. I was always perpetually like I, I just couldn't conceive of it not being attached to something or someone else. And to be in this place where I can wake up every morning and literally be thankful and grateful and happy and excited about life is just it is this great elusive secret <laughs> it really really is so anyway i just wanted to um say that um and people can respond i think there's only one person watching right now but that was the question posed on the radio show this morning what would represent in your life having made it having arrived is it a fat 401k is it a summer home in some exotic place is it, you know, a million dollars in your savings account? What is it? What is it that to you would represent making it? And if you can be still and quiet enough and you can imagine that life or that thing or that someone, right? And um, really imagine it, feel yourself in it. Will it bring happiness? I'm not saying because I'm not I'm not a poverty I'm not a poverty um like what do you call them those little the people who like poor starving artists no I'm not about that I mean I think money is great I think money is wonderful I intend to have lots of money I think as a political activist I think as a healer I need resources in order to do the work that I want to do so I'm even trying to break bad habits that I have about how I see money. However, it is not the thing that is going to create happiness. All it's going to do is free up some space, free up some time for me to do the things that I want to do. So tell me what it is that you think will represent having arrived or having made it. You can um, text it after the video is done. And maybe we can talk about it again later. Anyway, enjoy the day. Create a great day. This is the Rogue Black Girl. Talk to you later.